In the mid 2000s, uh, as Griffith Observatory was finishing its renovation, uh, I was always on the lookout for information about uh, meteors and, and comets uh, to put in the Griffith Observer magazine. And I discovered a very informative website uh, that was run by uh, Quan Zi. I was surprised to find out that at that time you were in high school. Uh, I was in the uh, city of Guangzhou, um, maybe more, you know, commonly known as Canton here, although that's the historic name. Uh, that's in the southern part of China, about two hour drive from Hong Kong, in case you wonder where it is. That was a very informative site. There were not a lot of sites on the internet that had observational information about meteor showers and comets, so I found it very valuable. That was in addition to uh, uh, Charles Morris, who is local me here and, and a handful of other sites, but uh, you've had quite a career since then. Can you tell me briefly you know, some of your accomplishments uh, since your high school days? Got a PhD and got married. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, so um, I've been captivated by stars uh, for quite a while, uh, and I have been dreaming to become, a, you know, doing astronomy as a profession, you know, doing astronomy research as a profession. Um, so I went to college in China, also in the city of Guangzhou. And back then, China has very few astronomy program, actually only four, I think, uh, that high schoolers can get into. And none of them is in southern China. So I said, OK, maybe studying meteorology is not a bad idea. Um, so I went to college there, studying atmosphere science, hoping to get a better grasp about the unpredictable weather there. Um, but later realized that I still, well, maybe doing astronomy is, fits my heart better. So I decided to move across the ocean uh, and went to, and about 10 years ago, I went to Universal Western Ontario for a PhD, uh, starting with Professor Peter Brown, who uh, you may know that it's a guru in meteor science. Uh, and I wanted to do meteors because it's cool and it's something that I've been interested in for a long time, uh, along with comets and asteroids, you know, um, moving objects in the night sky. Sometimes comets can be very bright and it's fun to see them outside. Uh, and I feel absolutely fortunate to be able to continue my career. Uh, first, went to Caltech for my postdoc research. Uh, still in the study of ast asteroids and comets, although I slow, slowly move away from meteors, I, as you may see, but I still go out once in a while to, to, to observe meteor showers. Uh, and now I move back to the East Coast, uh, and I'm now a research scientist at University of Maryland, and currently visiting Boston University um, here in Boston. Well, turning to the uh, possible upcoming event, the so-called 73P IDs, which I guess are a branch of the uh, Tau Herculid uh, meteors that come from comet Schwachmann Bachmann 3, <laughs> or 73P, it's, it's more affectionately known, I think. Um, so can you tell me why, why is it thought that there might be a meteor storm this year? So, you know, now in the 21st century, uh, we have some, we think, good understanding of how planetary dynamics work. Um, we know Newton's law, of course, and we know how planetary bodies orbit the sun. Um, so it's possible to calculate bodies of objects in orbits, you know, in different orbits, and see whether they can do, and see uh, how they interact with other planetary bodies. So for instance, uh, we can calculate um, ejectors you know, dust particles ejected, released by comets, which we know that they do all the time, uh, and see how they evolve uh, and whether they can end up in um, Earth encountering trajectory, meaning that they could hit the Earth. But don't worry about that because meteor, meteor particles are pretty small. They are like, they are smaller than a sand. So all they can do is that they interact, they, they enter Earth's atmosphere, they interact with the atmosphere, and they leave a bright streak known as the uh, shooting stars or meteors, and they won't do harm to, 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 to earthlings on the ground. 
um, at least in the majority of these events. So, um, so some researchers did a calculation of the ejectors of meteor particles released by 73P, the comet that you just mentioned, and realized that um, a subset of them could have a very close encounter. Um, to be precise, it's about 0 0.0004 astronomical unit or about uh, a seventh of the distance from the Earth to the moon um, in late May of 2022. Now, what makes this even more interesting is that 73P has a fragment has a history of fragmentation, meaning that the comets have been observed to break apart. Uh, and as you may know, when you break something, uh, what's a good analogy? Uh, let's say you make a snowball uh, and you start throwing in the air and it may break into many, many smaller pieces, right? Um, and effectively, this creates a large amount of meteorite particles in the interplanetary space. Now, this raises an interesting possibility is that first, we know that something is going to, or something may pass the Earth very closely in May, late May 2022. And second, this thing might have break apart, you know, break into many, many smaller meteorite particles. That means if conditions are right, and if we were lucky, we could see a big meteor storms. And this is why, um, People have been thinking, saying that, hey, you know, we have this interesting planetary alignments in the May, late May of 2022, and something interesting might happen. But of course, now here comes the hard part, is that there are many unknowns in this story. Um, so first, um, the, set, um, the, the, frag the fragmentation that I just mentioned uh, happened in 1995. Um, back at the time that there are some observations, we know something crazy happened, but we don't have that many observations to constrain the, um, the details of this fragmentation. We know the comma fragmented, we know that it broke into four major pieces, uh, but we don't know some details like what's the exact ejection speed uh, and like how much of these materials are uh, produced and may survive uh, about 20 years later, about 25 years later. And, and therefore we don't, uh, there is, there's apparently a, like on some things here, we don't know. We know that this alignment is going to happen, but we don't know how much materials will be de delivered to the earth. And <laughs> of course, what well, this makes this even more complicated, sorry to, 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 to saturate yourself, Test session everybody with all these details is that we don't well we have seen common fragmentations uh, commas like to disintegrate they like cats they do whatever they want right like they let me has mentioned uh, and they do things different commas fragment differently some of them seem to you know just boom and then it's all gone and 73p um, seems to have its own character. He has been, it has been in this so-called cascading fragmentation, meaning that it breaks apart, bring, break, breaking into several big pieces. And some of, this, some of these big pieces seems to remain for a, a little while, while others, you know, are gone the next time it comes back. Uh, and different pieces also behave differently. Um, some of them seems to be more active than others. And more, by, by more active, I mean that they, uh, the ejection is more powerful and, and, and push the particles further, meaning that there is a bigger chance that they can intersect with, uh, they can hit the Earth. And now we don't know which fragment does what. So that means that if we happen to be in the path of a fragment that happened to be more active, then there's a bigger chance to see a storm. But if otherwise, then there could be little or even no activities. So there's huge uncertainties here. We know that something is going to happen, but we don't know how, what, what's the outcome of it. Is it going to be a big show or is, is it close to nothing? Now, given the, all of that uncertainty, um, I'm sure there's some people that are afraid of hyping 
the event and disappointing people because they're going to go outside and maybe nothing will happen. But what's your attitude towards watching something like this? Oh, my attitude is it's part of fun. It's like, you know, something may happen, but something it may happen or you may not, but you won't know until you go out and take a look.